this uh, consequence of undermining our civil liberties is really disturbing. That should be what gets to us because it seems like we can put the wars out of the way unless you have a loved one killed or sent over there and, and uh, put things off and, and try not to worry too much about the monetary system and the Federal Reserve and all, all these things. But back to this intrusion at the airports. Up until now, it's been traditional to understand that a totalitarian society is known when they force you to carry your papers. But we've been there for a while. Where can you go without your social security number? Where can you go without your driver's license? Can you get a job? Can you open up a bank account? Can you get on an airplane? No, you have to show your papers. But this is worse. I don't know of any country that's ever done it. In this case, what we have to do is reveal our genitalia to make movement around the country, around the world. If we don't, if we don't get to the point where you know we just say this is it, we're we're going to put our foot down and not do it. But but people say, well, no, why do this? Why why boycott and do this? Uh, you'll be late on your airplane, and there is a lot of truth to that. But it's, but people will finally boycott or obstruct or practice civil disobedience when it gets so bad. It's incrementalism that is so dangerous. I mean, uh, and fear is their tool. Make it fearful. How many times have they made it worse at the airport with ha without having some incident? Oh, the shoe bomber almost blew us up and almost all this. As if we didn't have the TSA, that wouldn't have happened. But if you had had private options, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Before 9-11, we were spending $40 billion on intelligence gathering. And they had a lot of information gathered to indicate that there was enough information to get fair warning. I mean, what's the CIA supposed to do? This, you know, they're supposed to give us intelligence maybe to protect us, but they ignore that and they go off and uh, fix elections and get involved in, in starting, starting new wars. So this, um, th this to me is uh, something that we all should be able to rally around and uh, say that we will not put up with it any longer. Longer. And uh, when, when we do uh, uh, run into obstacles, then we have to realize what, why that is happening. And the airports may become chaotic, and it will make a lot of people unhappy. But if we say nothing, can we depend on the courts to protect us? No way. Can we, protect, can we depend on the executive branch? No way. If the Congress is waking up, hopefully it's waking up, the Congress will do something about it. One suggestion is this. One of the chairman of the committee that... Uh, handles TSA has suggested that um, why don't we turn the uh, management of the screeners over to private industry. But he didn't say change the rules. Private industry would enforce them. It's just another contractor like sending contractors over to Afghanistan. They would be required to you know, enforce the same laws. But they can't become efficient in abusing us. So uh, that isn't the answer. The answer is that your security and your safety depends on what you do. We, we can't depend on the police. We don't have a policeman in the front door of our house. And uh, it depends on... Uh, and I, I think the founders understood this. I think that's why they gave us a Second Amendment. You, you know... But if... Uh, if the police can't uh, protect us, then we can't dep depend on our, our government to do it. I mean, if, uh, if, if we're responsible, then it's, it's up to us. So um, we, we have really an opportunity, although this is bad. It's bad economics. I can go on and on about how horrible the deficit, how, how bad uh, the uh, uh, mo monetary system is and what we're expecting to get with a monetary crisis. But the big crisis is the crisis on the attack on our liberty. For all the things that I do and for reasons, I'm not involved in the Federal Reserve because uh, I care only about the monetary issue. There's a lot of reasons to be against the Fed, you know, like the Constitution, like economic policy and secrecy and all these things. 
But the real reason to be opposed to the authorities who can create money to subsidize and take care of debt is the fact that that's how government gets bigger. If government never had an instrument of inflation with a secret bank, it'd be very hard to have runaway welfare spending because they'd have to borrow the money in the market, interest rates would go up high, and it would be cut off. So if you say this is crazy to attack the Federal Reserve and why do you do it, if you care about personal liberty, if you care about a more peaceful world, if you care about uh, you know a healthier economy, uh, you have to you know support the position of getting rid of the Federal, Federal Reserve because the Federal Reserve is the one, is the engine of inflation and they can't do much uh, with, without this, this assistance. So, and the Fed! And the Fed, yeah. In a free society, it, uh, it does invite uh, a bit of tolerance. In a free society where you have responsibility for your life, and you should, it's a natural right for you to have uh, your inalienable rights, you should have the right to all that you produce, which means no income tax. <laughs> but you also have the obligation that if you don't do well, if you, if you live with risky behavior, then you have to suffer the consequence and there is one strong rule in a society like that. You can't do to your neighbor what the government's been doing to our neighbors lately. You have to respect your neighbor, and both person and, and, uh, and property. Uh, so this, uh, this is a society that emphasizes personal liberty. And it was pretty well understood in the early part of our history. But about a hundred years ago, for some reason, people came along and they lost their way because we became so wealthy. They weren't concerned so much about the principles of liberty. They were concerned about the products of liberty. They became materialistic. And for another reason, those who did defend liberty did it in bits and pieces. Somebody would pick up and say, oh yeah, I think economic liberty is good. We should have free markets and no price controls and wage controls. Then somebody else would say, oh yeah, I think we should have personal choices. But freedom is all, all one thing. The reason it doesn't work is there's too much intolerance in the world. Now, in a free society, people are going to do dumb things and they're going to write bad things. That doesn't mean you have to endorse what they do, but it means you can't tell them what they have to do as long as they don't hurt other people.